Hello everyone, welcome back to the Bremen Regional Championships for the Pokemon Trading Card Game 2017. I'm Nicholas Pierce once again and I'm here with Lydia. We are about to kick off with round three of this Regional Championships. So this round we're going to see Edgwind. He's from a Scandinavian country, I think it's Finland. So he's from Finland, yeah. Uh, against Patrick. Yeah, is it, should we, is it Patrick B? Yeah. Patrick H, I guess. No, no, it's, it's uh, Bat Batos Sovic. Oh, yeah. sure. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, I'm so, sorry. Yeah, Patrick B. He's uh, from the Czech Republic, who's a country that's uh, done achieved achieved uh, a lot of uh, really good things in uh, in the past in the Pokemon Training Card game. So, yeah, and uh, no, he's not actually in the lead. This is <laughs> this is the oh, start. No, he's yeah. Not. Okay. Okay. So. Yep. So. Um, uh, no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, hey. so um, we know so far that Urchvind is playing a Gardevoir deck. We haven't seen so far in the tournament. Yeah, yeah, we have indeed. Uh, so the time has already started, so there will be a sort of setting up here. Um, and yeah, we um, so Urchvind did actually he's um, had previous success at uh, the Birmingham Regional Championships. That's where we've sort of seen him from before. And uh, Patrick, we've seen him quite a few times on the stream. I think he was on the stream at Liverpool. I think. I think so. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, both uh, very already accomplished players. You know, it was funny. I was um, when I saw Oyvin going down the stairs to go to the feature match area. In like he was just sort of like he at, he stood at the top of the stairs just to sort of he closed his eyes, took a deep breath, and just uh, sort of relaxed himself. Like he was like a little bit nervous going on stream, which is uh, yeah, it's always a funny thing to see. Um, but yeah, so so we see Patrick having a mulligan. Uh, Edmund also already put a dice on his deck to mark how many extra cards he may take. So. Yeah, indeed. And uh, so, again, we don't, so sadly, because we don't have access to deck lists, we don't know what these players are playing, although we see... But if you were for a twin and you're playing God of War, what would you like to face? Um, oh, do you already know that Open is playing God of War? Yeah, oh, okay, I asked so, him. Oh, oh, you did. Okay, great. Um, I don't know, just not Metagross, I yeah, guess. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you if um, Patrick flips over a Beldum, oh, is that oh. a Dark Energy? No, Grass Energy. No. What? Oh, I think Patrick is playing Vikabulu. Oh, okay. So, yeah, it, it's it's fine for Gardevoir. I think it's um, I mean, Vikabulu they can get a one shot, well, a two shot with um, the Tapu Bulu if they do a um, a flying flip to everything. So, um, but yeah, okay. Actually, I realized they um, so oh. we 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 actually started the time a bit too early. We just reset it. It's fine. Um, just stop, uh, stop it! Just stop it! Stop it first! Yeah, we, we reset. Set. Yeah, just uh, fifty. Yeah, okay. yeah, we were. Okay. Yeah, it's fine now. Fine. So, <laughs> yeah, so they are starting off, and yeah, Patrick. Yeah, indeed, he's playing Vikavolt Bulu. We seem to start with a new active. That's interesting. We don't see that often in Vikavolt Bulu decks, but we do see he has no, a grubbin on the bench too. Starting off with a Tapu Lele, probably gonna grab that Bridget. Yeah, Edmund has not the ideal start. He's starting with a Ramoride. Yeah. You don't really want it as your starting Pokemon, but I think it's okay if he has access to other bench Pokemon because you you like to have a Remoraid on your bench in the first turns anyway. Yeah, so I think it's fine as long as he has Bridget and access to yeah. Alolan Vulpix. That's the important thing because then with one energy he can retreat the, the Remoraid into the Alolan Vulpix, do yeah. beacon, and then it's fine. Then it's actually a good start. Yeah, um, but if he doesn't have that, then yeah, could be a little bit of an issue as we see there. Patrick going for the Bridget and just debating what to take. It looks like there's one Grubbin in there at least uh, and. Just opting to grab two. Yeah. So so it's quite common to do this with Bridget sometimes because sometimes you just want to keep the extra bench slot free in case, say, you get end into another dead hand and then you need to Lele for another supporter. So yeah. you don't want to just fill up your bench entirely. And it's okay because um, Patrick already has good, the Pokemon he wants on his bench, so there's no need to, to fill his bench now. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so... Yeah, it's interesting to see about it with the Mew. It's sort of it does have that same sort of benefit that the Tapu Koko does in the sense that it has a free retreat, so you're getting yeah. not punished for playing it. But not not having access to that really strong flying flip attack means that essentially most of the time you're you're using it to maybe hit something for psychic weakness. So we're copying the nature's judgment. Maybe it's against uh, SP on EX. Possibly, yeah. I mean, you can, you can get a knockout without discarding the energy. Yeah. Or um, or even just as a, a a free retreat pivot, you know, just like again, yeah. same way you use Tapu Koko. But yeah, we'll see what happens here. So Ovin indeed does have the Ultra Ball. He's already he's already going ahead of himself, grabbing the Bridget, but it gets yeah. Lele first, 
there's the Bridget. So, and he has the fairy energy in hand. So yeah, if the Vulpix is in prize and if he plays it, which I'm assuming both will be the case. Uh, does he actually see it? Ooh, are you, mm. no. Oh, but he's playing the Sylveon version. Okay. Oh, okay. Interesting. So we see here there, him there eyeing up the Eevee. So see? this is a build we've seen a little bit before. Why do you, so like, because Sylveon is obviously really good. What does the Sylveon do, Lydia? <laughs> oh, well, the Sylveon, um... <laughs> it lets you search your... <laughs> Sorry, I should probably should have put, spot, put you on the spot like that. So the, the Sylveon, it, the, the first attack let, for a one fairy engine just lets you search your deck for any free cards. Yeah. yeah. So um, it's really good for setting up because you can just grab, say, a Red Candy, a Gardevoir, and then something else. So yeah. And you can just set up your, set your board really nicely like that. And you can also get the Sylveon and play quite easily because uh, with... EV and energy evolution, you can attach an energy and then directly evolve into uh, whatever kind of or whatever type of energy you attach to it. So if you attach a fairy energy, you may evolve it into a fairy Pokemon. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So and the only problem for Oivind is that he can't really do that this turn because of course he's already attached his energy to the EV and he has no way of retreating. Yeah. So a bit, bit unfortunate for him there, but it's still a decent start and now Patrick is gonna have to mount some kind of response. He do, we do see he has an N in his hand, he has an Ultra Ball as well, and looks like he's going to play that Ultra Ball, probably discarding, yeah, it looks to be a Field Blower, yeah, and, and a, oh, two Field Blowers, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he played yeah, different artworks, <laughs> got confused. So let's see what it's going to get, probably. If he has a Rare Candy, probably a, uh, oh, okay, no oh, he doesn't. Yeah. So yeah, just grabbing the Charger Bug, evolving the Grubbin, and then playing the N. So he, he had no cards left in his hand, so N was the only card left. He's getting a full fresh hand, played all his hand down. It's it's nice if you can have something like that. Yeah, yeah, okay, of course. It's uh, still a brand new six cards. It, it, again, it's that tricky thing because sometimes you just want to draw cards in the early game, but with no, no, the reverse league and now gone, that's like one less N that Patrick Grav likes access yeah. to in the late game to maybe disrupt Oivin, which could be a problem, but... We'll see if it ends up working out for him. Um, the so they, yeah, they're just drawing it off at the end now. It will be interesting to see if Patrick is actually playing the Coco promo. It's become pretty commonplace nowadays, I think, in in lists for Week of Bulu, because especially because yeah. of the synergy it has with uh, Ko and Gardevoirs easily. But I mean, if he doesn't actually, or even might be in a really good spot. Um, but we do see that. Oh, interesting. So Patrick actually using the Muse Attack Encounter so that oh. you, so that you for one energy lets you search your deck for any Pokemon and put it in your hand. Oh yeah, that's that's nice. Yeah, it is very nice. Not quite as powerful as Beacon, but you know, sure. it's uh, it, it it's it's uh, still an option. Um, didn't even see what he grabbed because he put it into his hand so quickly. Yeah, it's it's sad uh, that we sometimes miss plays like that. Um, it's so fine. It looks like Urchman has a rare candy on his hand, but I'm not so sure if he's able to find a Gardevoir. He has a Does Gallade. It? Okay. So if he decides... Oh, he, oh, he has an Ultra Ball. Okay. Yeah, and he discarded you... a Gallade. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because um, the thing with a Gallade, obviously, it, it can be nice, but at the same time, you really want to get out your Gardevoir as soon as possible, because that is going to be your main attacker. It's got the big amount of HP. It can, you know, do the huge damage with the infinite force. It's just what you want to be attacking with most of the time. And usually it's not that hard to get Pokemon from your discard pile back into your deck. I assume <laughs> Urchman is playing a Rescue Scratcher and a Super Rod, so... Yeah, without a doubt. Uh, so, so discarding it is still fine at this point. Where, where Gallade really actually comes into great effect, and this is something I like to do when I'm playing Gardevoir, I, um, you can use the Premonition ability in combination with Octillery's yeah. Abyssal Hand, and then you can just be a little bit more likely to dig into the card that you need. Yeah, you, you can basically decide what you want to draw from the top five yeah. cards of the deck, yeah, which uh, is really, really strong. Yeah. Um, you see, uh, oh, I've been drawing quite well off of yeah. the... Um, he already used uh, his the, the God of War ability, so he attached two energies this turn, one from his hand and one from the ability. Yeah, but that's actually fine because yeah. uh, with the two energies between the God of War and the Mew, that is will be infinite force of 60, taking a knockout onto... On and because we've played the town map, he actually can pick the exact prize he needs as well. Unfortunately, we can't really see his prices. Oh no, because it's glare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh no! Uh, also, not helped by the fact that uh, it seems like Patrick is actually playing left-handed. 
In- yeah, yeah, because you're playing the build deck on the other side. It's interesting. That's really interesting. Yeah, is that a let's look for a GX counter as well? Patrick has the secret rare Ray Crazer from Oh yeah, Dragon's Exalted. Dragon Vault wasn't it? Dragon? No, yeah, the, 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 yeah, the secret Dragon rare, Exalted the secret rare version. Really yeah, okay. in fact, it might even be the Japanese version because like, oh. it looks like it has like a silver border. That's, that's really cool. <laughs> that is pr- indeed pretty cool. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah, see that and, uh, another another N, N yeah from Patrick yes so if you're Patrick here what do you think you really want to dig for I mean you you got the the Vigor Vault out Vigor Vault. that's good but there's no energy attached to it yet no so you probably want to see an energy now I mean he's used strong charge to put energy onto the Bulu but uh, the unfortunate thing for him is that, like we were saying earlier, the Gardevoir has too much HP for the the Bulu's really knock it out, which is, yeah, it's like we were saying before, it's really not ideal, and this is where we like to see maybe the Tapu Koko promo, because then you can, you know, yeah. actually... Oh, another oh. Vika Vault, wow. This time he, he had a rare candy Vika Vault from the end. He did. I don't see an energy in his hand. No, so, so he actually yeah. is just going to do 180. Yeah. Now... This will be it. Will be very interesting to see if Oivin plays either Acerola or Max Potion. If he plays either of those, maybe cards, he also plays Fairy Drop. I saw versions with Fairy Drop. Another option. So. Yeah, if he plays, if he plays either of those, then yeah, that could uh, make Patrick very, very sad. <laughs> <laughs> because that would destroy his numbers. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we do see a, a uh, later going down for Oivin, going to use the Wonder Tag to grab himself the Professor Sycamore. And yeah, he's really going to want to be digging for if he plays a, a max potion or a fairy drop. Yeah. Well, would one fairy drop be enough? Because if he does only one fairy drop, I think Patrick can just do 180 again and take the knockout. So he oh, might. Oh yeah, that's true. He, I think he'll need. No, actually, even if even if you play two fairy drop, it wouldn't be enough. So yeah, he needs to see the max potion here, and it looks like he missed. Yeah, I don't yeah, see it. No. Mm, bit of an unfortunate he has a spot. Choice band, but but attaching the choice band does nothing here because yeah. it's still a two shot. So yeah, or even realizing this, just gonna do the infinite force. Yeah, for so 90. he's he's keeping the choice band for a, another Pokemon. At a later point in the game, he can maybe use that on a Gardevoir to actually yeah. one shot a Bulu with no energy on it, for example. But yeah, now I mean Patrick will be able to take the knockout on this Gardevoir because he does have. Uh, access to two strong charges per turn, yeah. which is crazy. And he does have the energy in hand this time as well. But it's a lightning energy, which is actually a problem because, of course, strong charge attaches uh, only grass, uh, one grass and one lightning. Yeah. In fact, oh, he has no lightning left in the deck. Yeah, it looks like he has no energy left at all. In- oh, there's. Only grass, yeah. So, he, th- thankfully, because he had two strong charges, it was fine. But if he didn't, yeah. then yeah, that would have been a big problem. Yeah, he's going to just denote that both of those have been used. Then, yeah, attaching the lightning from hand. And I imagine an end, yeah. So I imagine at this point, what he'll do is just do Nature's Judgment, but not for the, not discarding the energy, just yeah. do the one to for the knockout. Or actually, he could do um, Tapu Wilderness. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, of course, this has been the GX attack, which uh, lets you do 150, but then entirely heals the Tapu Bulu. And then at that point, or even is. Uh, yeah, so sort of yeah, even if he does not need the healing part, still he's not losing his energy. Actually, yeah, he just has to. I guess the one thing he has to be careful with that is that if he does do that, because the energy stays on, then Gardevoir only needs free energy to carry him back. So, yeah. from that perspective, might be better to just save the GX attack for now. It, it's it's very it's very tricky. It's going. Oh, oh. He, oh, he's discarding all his energy. Interesting. Okay, so. I guess maybe he's thinking, oh, if I'm going to lose it anyway, then at least or even needs more to take the knockout on me if I do this. He's got. Looks to be a fairy. Oh, okay, he's got it. So, oh, okay. So yeah, it doesn't matter. He's got so that the extra ninety damage will take the KO on the Bulu. We see a Skylar from Oivind as well. well. I wonder what this is going to be for. Oh, for an oh. M. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess he just doesn't have a supporter in hand. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Oh, it's always. It feels so bad to Skylar for a supporter card. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's going to be a lot more common now because, yeah. I mean, before you might Skylar for like a Versus Seeker or you, yeah. you're just, <laughs> well, you wouldn't probably wouldn't even play Skylar in a lot of decks. But yeah, yeah now sometimes it's got to do what you got to do. Oh, that is big. Plea GX. So for those of you who don't know what this does, it just lets you basically take, pick two of your opponent's bench Pokemon and just go 
go bounce and bounce back to the hand. So now Patrick is really, really far behind because he's going to be forced to set those up really slowly again. Yeah, and Patrick is left with almost no energy on his field. That's also pretty bad. Actually, he, he wants to find some super rods or stuff that gets his energy back into his stack. But now with all his uh, Vika Volt line on his hand, he ha does not really want to play supporters like Sycamore. No. And an N doesn't really help as well, so... Yeah, because of course now he plays the N, all of those yeah. cards get shoved back <laughs> in and it's just, uh, yeah, really not great. Um, yeah, Patrick really wants to see his... Like like a lot of Buddha decks, he uh, tends to play Energy Recycler instead of... Uh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, so, Energy Recycler. Because, uh, yeah, so 5 Energy going back into the deck like that. Um, and yeah, at this point, Patrick might just want to sit on this hand, actually. Yeah, maybe he might just pass. Oh, oh, no. he, oh, he's playing the end. Okay, he's going for it. So I wonder how many Ultra Balls and other resources he still has in his deck to find those Pokemon. It's hard to say. Yeah, I mean, this end won't be drawing him a huge amount of cards either because, of course, he's already taken two prizes. Yeah. So it's going to be an end. And he's going to draw four cards. Uh, Four cards isn't that much, no. especially if you have a lot of things in your deck you don't really want to see. Yeah. We were saying earlier, Jesper is like, oh, yeah, draw you enter four is fine, but that's because he had Oran Guru as well. Like yeah. with Patrick, this this four is literally always going to see. And oof. you see, must be a Vika, Vika Vault. Oh, we do see oh, a Nest Ball. Does he play the Oran Guru? No. No. Well, at least if he does, it's prized. And yeah, he's actually just opting to grab nothing. But still, he, he saw what's left in his deck, and this can also be a great help to decide what you want to do now. Yeah, indeed. And he's fine for next turn because he does have the Sycamore. Yeah. So, and uh, yeah, I just realized I'd let that massive shot on there. <laughs> <Just like, laughs> Sorry, the games are boring, I promise. Um, oh, this is going to be a long day, by the way. Yeah, it is. So, for those of you who don't know, this is actually going to be a nine round tournament. So, we have got nine rounds worth of entertainment for all of you uh, happy lots sitting at home, not having to. <laughs> either play or talk through nine <laughs> rounds worth of Pokemon. So we hope you guys really enjoy the weekend. And uh, yeah, just like let us know. Either maybe you know, we can have a look at the chat in a little bit. Just uh, tweet at us. So you actually, so oh, yeah. yeah, so we have uh, the Limitless uh, Twitter is uh, at... It's at Limitless TCG. But yep. I do also have an own Twitter. It's at Limitless Lydia. Yeah. And uh, if you want to tweet at me personally, my... Uh, I should really change my Twitter handle because it's hard to like spell <laughs> out, but it's uh, at Xanatu-NP, so that's X-A-N-A-T-U-N-P, that's my personal Twitter, so you can reach either of us on there. Just uh, let us know what you think of the day, let us know what you think of uh, you know what's being played, if there's any particular decks you really want to see in the next few rounds, just uh, get in touch with us and let us know. Or better let us know what players you want to see. Yeah, that or... that's, would probably be easier for us. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we, we see. Obviously, we're going to try and feature people on EXO as much as possible. But towards the later rounds, then do we have a bit more flexibility because the EXOs will probably ID. Yeah. So, yeah, so let us know what you want to see and let us know what you're thinking so far. So, back to the game. Or even he's managed to get his artillery out. That's pretty good. So he's now going to have that flexibility to draw a few more extra cards, getting the super rod in as well. So going to be able to shuffle back in a few. Uh, looks like a Rolt, a guard of art, and a psychic and a fairy energy even. Yeah. So. So, uh, Urchman's field looks actually pretty good. He has uh, two, two Gardevoirs out, one Octillery, which gives him some kind of security. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. So now if, if uh, he gets end in a later stage in the yeah. game, the Octillery will save him because I, I feel like um, nowadays the end proofing outs that we have, sort of, yeah, Octillery and, and Oranguru, yeah. they're made so much better by the virtue of the fact that the only thing that really negates abilities is the Garbatox and Garbador. Hex, yeah. Maniac, and well, Silent Lab, in case of Oranguru, are both gone. So it's actually much more likely that the you can actually protect yourself in these situations, whereas before might have actually been a little bit trickier. Yeah, that's true. So let's see, it's Patrick's turn. No, no, it's uh, still, yeah, oh, sorry, yeah, it is Patrick's turn. Yeah, Patrick cause... just played an, a heavy ball. Heavy ball lets you search your deck for a Pokemon that has more than uh, three retreat costs. Uh, three or, three more. or more. Yeah, So uh, able to get that charger bug. Uh, which is great for him and yeah so hopefully next turn for him he'll be able to get that Vika Vault and start you know, yeah. putting back on pressure because right now Oivin is being uh, afforded a lot of turns to just attach energy and set up and this is how Gardevoir wins to be honest yeah 
just piling on a bunch of energy, um, doing big damage, and um, yeah, just take, sort of taking the game from there. Yeah, it takes you a long time to set up, but Gardevoir is one of those decks. If you are set up, you can actually play with your field. You, if you if you a dead draw in the setup, it's bad. But once you're set up. You're actually fine. Yeah, definitely. And as you see there, he's able to take the knockout with Infinite Force. Two more prize cards for him. And now back to Patrick as, yeah, he really wants to find this Vika Vault now. Is that an enhanced hammer in his hand, do you see? Oh, no, it's oh, an Ultra Ball. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got these gold items, man. It's just... Yeah, those gold items are really look so similar. Yeah. Um, There's a Guzma in his hand as there well. There but is, but... Ooh. He does not want to yeah yeah he because he needs the ultra ball he needs to find this vicar vault but yeah he really doesn't want to get rid of <laughs> that's the that's the problem with ultra ball sometimes it's uh, especially now that we don't have versus seeker before yeah. it was much easier to manage but now it's like oh you know if i do that for example before sometimes you were even happy if you could discard something like a Guzmar or a lysander because then you know it's available in your discard pile yeah definitely but now it's like oh every time every single time you do that it's like uh oh it's too less that i can actually use this game <laughs> Yeah, you, you have to have a better look at your resources mm -hmm. without cards that recycle. Yeah. And as we see the ooh, going for the strong charge, actually going to attach to the Mew. So he's actually going to have a look to see what's even left in his deck. This, of course, this Mew won't be able to take the one shot onto the Gardevoir, which is a shame no. for him. And it looks like, so yeah, Lele for Lele, a second yeah. more. So Wanda Tag gonna grab the Tickamore from his deck and then gonna draw seven new cards. What is he going to find? No, what what does he need? It's seems like he had no cards in his hand left, so seven new cards without discarding anything. Yeah. I mean obviously yeah, he always go for it anyway, but it's just yeah. it's more wondering what is yeah, what is it that he's actually looking for, which is helpful. I mean, there's a choice band there, but that doesn't take the knockout either. No, it doesn't. Could, things could get a little bit ugly for Patrick here if he's not able to, especially if or even has uh, some kind of healing card. Yeah. That would be. But we haven't seen any healing cards so far. No, we haven't. So maybe he's not even playing healing cards. Well, possibly not. I mean, if, if he's not, then I guess Patrick is fine to do this. It'd be interesting to see. Oh, he does attach the choice band. Oh, no. oh, oh. <laughs> no, you're just like, do I, do I, do I not, do I not? <laughs> he's doing it. He's doing it. But he's copying... Oh! Oh, oh he's oh, he, copying Gardevoir. No, no, he's copying Energy Drive. Yeah. Yeah, so he's, 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 you're not Gardevoir. You, 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 oh, you, oh, he's, cop I, he's copying Lele. Lele. Yeah, uh, sadly... Ah. Yeah, the thing is with uh, Mew, sadly, this new one, it can only copy your basic attacks, not your opponent's. But actually, yeah, with the energy drive, the choice band, that actually yeah, wasn't enough in knockouts. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, didn't even, didn't even realize. Brilliant move from Patrick, as now he's able to take the knockout onto the Gardevoir. Of course, now Oiven will very easily take the return KO. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but still, it, it's, a, it's a good price trade. It is. Because Mew is a, a normal basic Pokemon, so it's only worth one prize card. Definitely. As Gardevoir GX is worth two prize cards, so... So, yeah, so now I think this game is basically going to come down to can Patrick find a means of uh, Guzmering for his last two prizes? And that's going to be tricky because then we literally just saw him discard two of an Ultra Ball because yeah. he's got the strong charge, that's fine. We know he has energy left, he has an energy recycler he has access to as well. But this Gardevoir might just sweep the rest of the field depending on what Patrick is able to find. So uh, he. He drew the cards from the end and he hasn't looked at them yet. So Patrick still doesn't know what he got from the end. Oh, now he's looking at them. Looks like to be a, a lightning energy and a choice band. Yeah. So there goes down the Mew. Mm -hmm. And now, now, yeah, Patrick's really got to think carefully. He does bring up the Tapu Lele. He's going to take his draw. What is it? Don't know. Oh, oh is it? What? <sighs> Looks like so he has a heavy, a ball. heavy ball. Is that super yeah. odd? No, that was a choice band. band. Okay. And then strong charge. He's got to be so careful though, because the more energy he puts on the Lele, the more the Guard of War is doing. Oh yeah, it's super tricky. In fact, oh, okay. yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, he has to. There's no way he can't. He can't attach to the active. He just get murdered. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> like, like a bit, it's like suicide. Yeah, yeah, a bit, <laughs> bit, bit, uh, bit grim. I realize, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, um, the 
So yeah, strong charge, putting lightning into the grass, onto the Vico, onto the not Vico, onto the yeah. Tapu Bulu, and just going to do an energy drive for ninety. So he's hoping for the two turns KO. Uh, but oh, there it okay. is. Yeah, he's got all the energy in the world to take the last knockout. So what are you doing? Just win game one, then we are going to be moving on to game two. Yeah, that's really, really tricky for Patrick at the end. That, that last end really sort of knocked him out of the game because yeah. and then at that point, Oyvind just had everything to just yeah set up his stuff to take the last few prizes. It's a really, really tricky situation to be in. And I think what this shows to me, Lydia, I don't know, I don't know if you feel the same way about this or not, is that really not having the Tapu Koko promo, whether he plays it or not, just like not having yeah. access to it, huge difference. Yes, it yeah. is. Because like if he had access to like to do twenty to everything, especially because it looks like as you said, it doesn't look like Open is playing any healing cards. Yeah. So if that being that being the case, then yeah, the Koko can just put twenty on everything, and then all of a sudden, Choice Band plus Nature's Judgment on Bulu KOs God of Wars. Yeah, it's so important to get these these good numbers. Yeah. so you you get uh, all the the damage you need. Definitely. So, what's what you guys saying for going to? Let's just head on over into the chat now. We've got the chance to see what you guys are saying to us. Um, so, oh, apparently he discarded Acer of Turn One. Oh, okay. Okay. So that that's fine then. Um, and then <laughs> 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 sleepy Nick. Yep. Plea. Uh, I missed the max potion. Oh. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> um, this is the senior poker player. I'm pretty sure those red candies used by Orvid or aren't legal. Actually, they are. So, a red candy had an official errata going into the black and white era. So, because it had an official errata, all older copies of it are legal. There, there you go. Yeah. So, um, so that's all, yeah, that's all good. And then, see, that's. <laughs> yeah, he's saying, uh, Divine Calamity is saying that he wants to show off that ray. It's like 40 bucks. 40 bucks, <laughs> yeah. It's a pretty cool one. Um,. San Garbador. Want to see? You want to see Todd versus some Guardi guy? Let's like see Guardi feet Sylvia in feature. Uh, round four is coming. Just, yeah, just scrolling up here to see what we missed. Yeah, actually, you asked uh, about online pairings. There are online pairings available. Um, you can find the link in the chat. It's on. Um, it's on Oak Slab. No, so, not Oak Slab. Well, online pairings. Yeah, online pairings. But um, you need a one player's pop ID to, to follow. Find, up. follow oh, up. it's like, yeah, so. one of those, yeah. So, yeah, there you go. If you do doing someone, yeah, there you go. Yeah, cool. thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, the Vong, for helping us out there. Um, and, oh, apparently someone has tweeted at us. Okay, can't can't see what's. Uh... So, which account did you tweet at? Just, sorry, I've got to check, check, my, my, check my feed. Oh, no, I've got no signal here. It's a little bit of a yeah, the, the mobile uh, internet is really bad. Yeah, it is. so it's like you were saying before, we were um, we're commentating from the ticket office of the of a music theatre. So actually, hit. a few rounds ago, someone asked if he can buy a ticket here. <laughs> yeah, we had to turn him down, <laughs> Un understandably. Um, yeah, looks like so you guys are getting ready to set up for game two here, and here we go so patrick is starting off with a bulu and oyvind starting off with a rolls so patrick's going first yeah of course he is so yeah I mean, sure <laughs> so yeah if you, if you lose a game you can choose in the next game whether to go first or second and going first is 99 percent of the time the right thing to do probably even like 99.99 percent of the time the right thing to do uh, uh so with the ultra ball there you're gonna find himself yeah tapu lele and assuming the bridget isn't prize gonna grab that and yeah yeah so, I think especially for this deck, we could Bulu. The gain of turn one Bridget is so important to the point where I think most lists probably play two instead of one because if yeah. you prize, if you play only the one and prize it, it's actually just game losing sometimes. And oh, oh. oh he's going for an N. Interesting. Maybe. Oh god, yeah, no, you couldn't Bridget that because you just probably lose the game if you did. Yeah, Gosh. you would be stuck without any any draw support. That's. That's one of the reasons why some people like playing Oranguru uh, in this deck because it means that you can bridge it for Oranguru, still do the bridge at turn one, and then play the rest of your hand and draw cards. Even if, yeah. so it means that even if you don't have a draw supporter, you can still go for the bridge at turn one. But instead, Patrick forced to play the end, and uh, this could be really bad for him if he doesn't find the grub in. Um, yeah, he's going to be yeah. be really forced onto the back foot straight away. Yeah, who will be basically one round behind? Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah absolutely. 
Yeah. See what see what you end up finding here, because yeah, this is gonna be a very very big six cards. Go so. one one two three four five six. Does he get the Does he get the grub in? He'll slow rolling himself. <laughs> no. No. Oh, too bad. And uh, there are no no ultra balls or anything. No, that is okay. There goes a town map for a bunch of stuff we can't see <laughs> <laughs> again. <laughs> um, yeah, down goes the another you know, roll with a choice band. So already and a sycamore. So already yeah. off to a much better start than Patrick. Definitely. And interesting way of drawing cards. Yeah, some on the table, some down. And oh, I guess the Remoraid as well. Who, who needs Bridget? Like, who, who's Bridget? You just like, set everything up anyway. Oh, that is yeah. Last, that is the last thing Patrick wanted to yeah. see. And on goes the Fairy Energy, uh, and it looks like it's gonna be a, a draining kiss for ten. Aww. Yeah. So, oh, is that is that one or a two? It should be. A, it should be a one, right? Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it should be a one. Yeah. So the draining kiss so it does ten to the opponent's active and then heals you for ten. In, in case anyone didn't know, <laughs> <laughs> um, another another grass energy goes down onto the Bulu, and now we see a heavy ball for another Bulu. Yeah, and and then, and then, then. yeah, Patrick really really needs to see a grub in here post haste. If he if he if he doesn't, then all he even needs is to set up a few guardies, and the game is almost as good as over. Don't yeah. don't get don't want to be too premature in saying that, but it's. It could make it could make him run into a lot of problems. In terms of the matchup, who would you say is in favor? I think because of the fact that uh, Patrick is not playing Tapu Koko Prem, yeah. as far as we can see, definitely Oivin, because that's really what the Vikabulu deck needs in order to hit those numbers, as you said earlier. It's just really, really important to make the maths work out. But because he's not playing it, yeah, it's much more of a struggle for, for Patrick. If he was, I'd say it's maybe 50-50, maybe even like a little bit favored towards Patrick. But yeah. since he doesn't, yeah, no question. So again, another another really big six cards for Patrick. Does he find anything to just grab himself a, a grub in? Just, you know, an ultra ball, a grub in itself, anything. See an energy recycler, a Mew. Aww. Is that an ultra ball? I, oh, it looks like... It is, okay. It is. Yeah. All right, so... <laughs> Shiny trainers again. Yeah. So this is this is fine now. So it's uh, forcing to discard him, the Mew and the Sycamore, but now he'll be able to get a Grubbin at least, and yeah. now he has a chance to make it come back in this game. I think if he misses the Grubbin there, the game is actually just, just over. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, unless again, or even draws dead, but I don't think he will somehow. Um, so Horn attack from the Bulu is going to put thirty on the Rolts, and then back to Oivin as. He does have a Gardevoir in his hand, but... Oh, is he... Oh, Mr. Mime. Oh, that's interesting. And an Acerola. So he puts the, the rails right back on his band. Oh, and but the he, energy, and now he passes. Oh, so that was almost like... Not necessarily a desperation play, but he's... Uh, that end must have hit him really hard. Yeah, oh, yeah. look at his hand. That is not workable at all. So actually, now... Maybe, maybe can Patrick can get a comeback. Yeah, because he's definitely... Okay, Patrick's playing a leader now. For... Skylar. I think he just wants to Probably. guarantee. I think he, he with Skylar he just wants to yeah, Skylar's a rare candy. He's yeah. got the V Quart in hand. Oh oh, oh, oh ultra ball. Oh wow, so he's just going yeah, no well, that's pretty risky. No hands McGee, just uh I think he realizes that because Because Urchin wasn't doing anything really, yeah. his hand can't be too good. Yeah. So he's now going for the prices. Yeah. Putting on some pressure. Again, no, it, it, it could be a bit risky because Patrick has played himself to zero cards in hand. Vika Bulu is one of these decks which can do that sometimes, but again, it's a lot less risky if you have access to Oranguru, which of yeah. course Patrick doesn't have. So if if Oivin is able to do like a miracle top deck of something, then... Or maybe he drew something good out of his prices. Uh... Yeah, but no, just no. a draining kiss from William. Wow, and this game has made a complete turnaround. All of a sudden, Patrick is in a commanding position. Etron is not able to do his setup. No. Again, that can happen sometimes in Pokemon, you know, and then hits you really hard, and it doesn't matter if you had the much better setup. It's just, yeah. you know, drawing dead. And um, now Patrick is taking KO after KO, and uh, actually we may be going to game three sooner than we expected. <laughs> I, I wasn't expecting that. No, 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 definitely neither was I. Yeah. Up comes the Rolts, does Oivin find something, anything, a Gardevoir, that's not going to be any good. That doesn't have him anyhow. No. Is he, do you think maybe he's considering conceding at this point? I think so. Uh, he's 
He does not want to concede yet. No. I think he's going to wait one more turn. If he finds Probably. maybe a rare candy next turn, maybe he can do a counterattack. Maybe then it will be fine. But if he doesn't, he really don't see much of a future in, uh, in Oivin's game. There are already two rails in the discard pile. And... Uh... One is probably going to be knocked out. Almost definitely. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, Patrick now has a hand as well. I mean, look, look at that. He yeah. was just uh, after taking some prizes off of stuff. And uh, it, it's really, it shows how strong Vika Bulu is in the sense that it is one of these decks that can play with you know, no cards in hand because yeah. it, one of these decks, like you think you said before, it works off of the field. So as long as you have the Vika Vault down, just charge up the attackers and you're good to go. And it looks like we see a, a Lady of a Guzma as well. Oh. oh. So he's going for the the rails with a choice scarf on it. Yeah, uh, and the, now of course with energy drive, sixty knocks out as well. Oh, so he's ban, yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. Um, and oh, you see, this, he draws a draws a Guzma. Okay, that's okay. that's kind of big. Uh, it means that Patrick now needs to draw his own Guzma or floatstone or something to retreat this. Um, but does he? But still, he's not in a good position. No. Let's see, he's doing a strong charge. Does he have any energy left in his deck? No. Ooh. Okay. Do you know what's in his hand? Not a Guzmo, I know that much, because otherwise he would have played it by now. But that's what he really needs. It's got a Field Blower and N and a Nest Ball. He does not want to play this N right now. No, definitely not. But he might not have a choice depending on how far it goes. He, ne he, needs, he needs Guzmo and he needs it now. <laughs> well, yesterday. <laughs> oh, he, he drew a second Ah, arc. okay. <laughs> it must be nice. Yeah, so Patrick bailed out there just uh, finding a second more. And if he finds a Guzmo off of this, should be able to use it next turn to seal things up. Unless he might have already played all of his Guzmas, actually. That's another point. He's has well, that could be. He's used one already. But he has his uh energy recycler, so He yes, he does. Although I think the problem is with energy recycler, I think literally all of his energy are on the field. Ah, that that's true. He has a whole lot of energies on the field. Yeah, so uh, none in deck, all on the field. Uh that's it looks like grabbing a Mew from his deck. Um, going to pass. Or even now, and then now he plays. Or even plays an end of his own. Oh, and yeah. Okay. It will be. I mean, it's a lot to ask before Oven to make a comeback. The biggest problem that Oven has is that if he brings up a guard of what to attack with, Patrick just brings something else up, and attacks in return, and then like there's no way that Oven can deal with Patrick's attackers before Patrick is able to do enough damage just to take his last few prizes. Not really. Yeah. Especially if you if you uh, think about that Oven only has one Gardevoir and no rails as they are already knocked out and in his discard pile so he needs to get them back into the deck before he can search for them again and he already used his Ultra Ball and Bridget and all that stuff. Yeah. So yeah, here comes an Ultra Ball. I imagine he'll be grabbing a Curly off of this because he does. Oh, oh no. Octillery. Oh, okay. So this is good. So now he can just start the start. You know, drawing some cards very nicely. Maybe just yeah, get himself into his Rescue Stretcher or Super Rod to get those rolls back in and just uh, you know take start to reassemble a position from here. We will be seeing an Abyssal Hand for let's guess two cards in hand right now. So we'll be able to draw three more of this Abyssal Hand. Yep, using it one, two, and three, four, four even. And there's another Rolls. Which is actually, oh, oh no, that he okay, oh. yeah, it was free. He drew too much. Oh, okay. there we go. That's fine. But he, did, but he still drew into the rare candy. That's fine. So rare candy is a Gardevoir, but does he have a follow up from that? I don't think he does. No, I think he's just forced to pass. Mm, going back to Patrick, does no Guzma from what I can see. He has a Bridget. It's not very good right now. <laughs> he might actually. Yeah, Sycamore. Yeah. Nine, six, seven. He's got to be careful. If he's unable to find a way to... Yeah. Oh, that's the Guzmer in hand. Okay. okay so, so but his deck is already very pretty low yeah. in cards. Actually, one way for Oivin to win this game could be to just Guzmer the Vika Vault again and just stall it active. Maybe he's going for that. Yeah, just making sure he takes the easy prizes off the board. How uh, many prize cards has Patrick left? Is, are they it's free. free. Okay. Yeah, so... Knocking out a Gardevoir does not win him the game, and I don't think he can knock out a Gardevoir with his current board state anyway. So, the way it, as it stands currently, I think, yeah, he's going to play the Guzman now. He's going okay. to bring up the Gardevoir all the same. So, yeah, he'll be able to switch out into the Lele, it looks like. Yeah, he's going to soften this up with the Lele so that yeah. then the Bulu can come in and uh, take the knockout. 
And uh, what does Oivin see? Oh, he does have a Lele in hand. So he might go for the Guzma. Let's see what he does. Yeah. Well, that's his only possibility. I guess so. There it is. Oh. <sighs> he was not for the weaker one again. Yeah. This is really big. Essentially, this game is going to come down to does Patrick have access to another Guzma? Is this a floatstone in his hand? Uh, no, 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 it's a fuel blur. Okay. And a really. and a old rare candy. <laughs> The one from Unleashed. Um, yeah, Patrick needs to find. It has to be Floatstone or Guzma. We don't even know. Who, yeah. We don't even know who plays Floatstone or not. If he doesn't, I don't think so. No. If he doesn't find his other Guzma, this uh, or even this actually might be able to squeak out a, a very <laughs> impressive win here. <laughs> um, he also needs to be very careful because if he draws too many cards, then he might deck out before Patrick does, which is yeah. another problem. But sometimes you you have to think about other win conditions than drawing all your prize cards. Yeah. There's a Gardevoir. Ooh. This Gardevoir also gives him some more time. It does. I think the fact that he's attaching a double color to Remoraid tells me that he knows that this is his win condition, essentially. Yeah. I think he knows at this point that he just needs to, like, to cross, wait and see. cross his fingers and pray that Patrick doesn't have another retreating out. There's a Skyler for an Ultra Ball. He's going to play it. Yeah, just discarding two Guardies. Yeah, he knows he doesn't need them. And... Uh, She's going to grab, she's actually going to go grab nothing and now he'll be able to do Abyssal Hand for the full, oh no, he's already done Abyssal Hand this turn. But, oh, yeah. but even then he doesn't Next really, turn. Yeah. but he doesn't really want to Abyssal Hand either because like I said, he doesn't want to, I mean his deck is kind of thicker than uh, Patrick's, but he really just wants to be very, oh no, but he hasn't done it yet, okay. That's fine, and he has, he has a fairy energy. Oh, and he's, oh, Twilight GX, of course. Oh, yeah. That that buys him some more time. And not only that, but you put more Guzmas into the deck. Yeah. Or even might be about to take a very impressive win here because now he puts the two Guzmas back in and he will always have more Guzmas than Patrick has Guzmas. So he might may put 10 cards from his discard pile back into his deck? Absolutely. Is it 10 cards or up to 10 cards? It's 10 cards, I believe. I'm actually not sure, but either way, you do, you always put yeah. in 10 in this circumstance because you want to make sure that you, your opponent decks out first. And now with access to two Guzmas, yeah, I think Patrick sort of realizes what's happening here. Yeah. This, yeah, he wants to take a real good look because... That's, that's basically Urchman's deck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's... With this now, if... Now Patrick needs... Like just more Guzmas than he has left. Like, yeah. I'm, like, I'm certain of it at this point because he's he definitely already used two, and he has no energy left. Yeah. And Oivin's being very clever about this. He knows yeah. that he doesn't want to Guzma to take like KOs on things. Like he's that that would get energy in discard. Then Patrick can use energy recycler, and then he's absolutely fine again. Instead, yeah, very very tricky situation for Patrick here. A very clever play. Very, very, very interesting. In fact, Patrick just draw passes, and then draw pass. Again, <laughs> draw pass. You can see this persisting for a little bit. Yeah, draw pass. Oh. And there's the last card in the deck. Is it a Guzma? I believe Patrick has an N left. Yeah, has an N left, but oh. but there's no no point in continuing. No, not unless I, maybe he needs to. I mean, we didn't really see if there was if we did have another Guzma in hand or not. If again, if he doesn't, then there's literally no way for him to win this game unless he must just be carrying on and just hoping maybe Oivin gets greedy, maybe he decides to take a knockout, maybe he gets impatient. But if Oivin just keeps his cool, doesn't attack, just leaves his big on the active, he will win this game. All Urchin needs to do is draw and pass. Yeah. And I believe he knows that. Yeah, I think he does as well. He's clearly, a, it's like I said, yeah, that's it. It's yeah. Space Enterprise. So, uh, incredibly impressive win from Oivin there. He's going to take the series 2 and 0, oh, stalling the Vikavol active and just, wow, in absolutely incredible. Absolutely. I didn't see that coming. No. So I believe yeah, we do have, because of the round finish today, we do have a little bit of extra time. So we are going to just uh, fetch Oivin for a quick interview if he's up for it. I'm not sure if he's, uh, you know, I, I should, what, is his English okay? or His English is okay. Is, okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll ask him if he's up for an interview and uh, we'll, either way we'll be back to let you know what's happened. So yeah, don't go anywhere. Okay. Yeah.
So welcome back. I'm here with uh, Edgmund, who is the winner of the last round. Uh, congratulations. Yeah, they were pretty close games that I win very unconventional way, you know. <laughs> with yeah, I, I saw that, especially the last game. Um, when, when did you realize that you could win by deck out? Uh, after he KO'd my third round, I was like, that's my only option. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and there's nothing to lose to go for it. Did you, did you believe that it would work out at the beginning? No. <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we were already talking about maybe it would be better to concede so you have more time for the next game. <laughs> were you thinking about it too? Yeah, I was thinking about it too, but then I got to N and yeah. I got okay cards from there. Then I look, look at him this cup pile and the first game I didn't he, he see him playing like Switch <laughs> or Escape or, or Float Stone. So I was like two or three Gasmas. So I was like two two is gone now. <laughs> and if I get the GX attack, yeah. put back my Gasmas, I win the like the war yeah. of Gasmas. So it get, got stuck in the active. That's what we also talked about, that your GX attack got you all the Gusmas back and now you're in a good position. Yeah. Um talking about the matchup, do you think uh you were in in favor versus Vika Volpulo? It's very close close matchup. I know how to, what to do in the situation because in Finland most of the players are playing Vika Bulo, so okay. it's familiar. Okay, so you know the matchup and you know what to do. Yeah. So um, and he was not playing like the Tapu Koko GX and Kukui choice band combo. Yeah, we we also talked about that he he misses the the right numbers yeah. to hit the uh, God of Wars. So it was it's it's still close matchup because Vika Bulo is. That kind of deck that can win against anything because it doesn't have a straight out loss. Um, so you're three zero now. Yeah. How did your other rounds go? Um, my first round was against uh, Espion Gabado. It was a very close game. Like, like in the first game, he misses the choice band and mm -hmm. with, the, with the KO. Oh, okay. And in the second game, he and me to two, and I got energy and race quest stretch and then KO. I got Sylvian in discard by Evie on the bench, so I <laughs> <laughs> put the Sylvian in my hand, energy, and search three cards to the win. <laughs> so. Crazy. And in the second round, I was playing against Ho Ho Salasl, mm -hmm. and it is it is a great matchup. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so um, is there anything you want to to say hi to? Uh, no, no, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Too many people, so... <laughs> okay, so uh, good luck for the rest of the tournament. Yeah, and uh, maybe we'll see you tomorrow or I in the last so. round. <laughs> <laughs>